my name is Carly Bartle and I'm here today to talk to you about building yourself. Um, for me, it's about the belief and the courage to weather the seasons of your Sensi business. So who am I? Just a little bit about me. My name's Carly Bartle, as I've said, I'm a star director here in Perth, Australia. I haven't always lived in Australia, I'm from the UK originally, and I've been doing Sensi for nearly six years now. I'm very fortunate that I've earned every incentive. I've been to South Africa, a top 150 earner. Um, I've got team in every region across the, across the regions. Um, and it's my full-time gig, I absolutely love it. Um, you can probably hear throughout this, the chirping in the background, that's Zach, my baby budgie that we've just, that we've just got. Um, um, so it's me and Zach presenting today. He's going to sing along with me while I'm presenting to you. But it's not just me and Zach. I do have my husband, Alan, and my little girl, Sophie, who is seven. They've gone for a little walk. So it's hopefully only Zach that's going to disturb us today. Um, so yeah, let me talk to you a little bit about building yourself. It's a pretty broad title. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about actually the development of you. Um, before I joined Sensi, I had never once picked up a, a self-development book. I can remember my mum way back in the day reading chicken soup for the soul and thinking what nonsense but as i grew and i did the training and stuff that's provided i once heard a superstar director say that sensi really is personal development with a paycheck and i could not agree more along with the connections that i've made with this business it's the most powerful thing that i've taken from this business the gift this development has given me while building myself is the opportunity to discover what it means to me to live a wholehearted life and to navigate the way through all the seasons of my business and not just my business but my life also it's impacted the growth I've experienced has impacted me so much in my general day-to-day -day life as well I would never be able to explain it um, and put it into words I don't think so today I want to share with you some points of my journey. There's been some amazing highs that have like taken my breath away, but there's also been some lows a few times where I thought, I just can't do this anymore. So your, your Sensi journey, our Sensi journey, is always a story of courage, resilience and vulnerability. And hopefully from today, you can understand that the lows and the struggles that you have in your business, that we all have in our business, have just as an important part to play as the highs. I'll teach you some tricks, hopefully, that I've picked up along the way on how to stay the course and to not waver. And by doing this, what it will allow you to do is to truly embrace the highs when they come, because they will come, they will come. And you get to learn that what they are are just joyful moments that you get to experience. You can't have the light without the dark and the seasons of your sensory business have to have both for you to be able to achieve what you're longing for, what it is that, that, that drives you. You've got to have the light and the dark. So before I talk about my personal experiences, let me talk a little bit about the suggestions, uh, a suggestion that I've got for you. If you ever feel doubt, shame, worry, and um, that icky feeling where you compare, which we all do, um, and just not being good enough, I think, it's part of the human experience. We've all experienced it in our business and our lives from time to time. And if you have, I absolutely recommend looking up a lady, if you haven't heard her already, called Brene Brown. She works a lot with shame, courage and vulnerability. And I, it's a, a lot of the basis of what I'm going to talk to you about today is the work and the study that I've, that I've made while listening, reading, watching her. Um, totally changed my perspective on so many things in the last few years. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my own personal stories today, but do just do yourself a favour and check her out if you haven't done so already. She's part of my daily ritual. I listen to her or read her or watch her pretty much every single day. Um, so yeah, just a little tip before I get started. So the seasons of sensing and the seasons of your life can really catch you off guard when you're experiencing a not so good moment. It can sneak up, it can give you a whack around the head, and if it, uh, especially if it's the first time, if things don't go to plan. But what I've learned is through every season, Sensi has my back, undoubtedly has my back. And when I decide to go all in, magic happens. When seasons change and for whatever reason I may not be as fully focused, they still supported me. They still, so they, they, they were still around even when the times weren't so good. They were still there for me when the times, were, and they were shouting me on and cheering me on when the times were great. 
So let me explain now with a couple of examples of different ends of, ends of the spectrum of success and how it's helped me ride the seasons without all that yucky, icky self-doubt I was just talking about. Like I said, courage, resilience, vulnerability are what's needed for most, well, for all seasons of your sensory business. Now, let me explain to you now, when I made the decision to go for South Africa, and in fact, any, any incentive that I have decided wholeheartedly to go for, notice how I say wholeheartedly, because that will come into the, into the chat a bit later on. Um, yeah, so when, I, when I've decided wholeheartedly to commit and go for something, it's, it takes great courage to make that commitment. Imposter syndrome is strong with me. I don't know about you. That whole who do you think you are um, creeps in. You, you, you can't do that. You have not got the personality of Mildred. No. You have not got the flair and the creativity of Fred. Um, you do not have the organisation skills of Mould. I'm sorry, these names are like, yeah, anyway, they've just popped into my head. <laughs> um, you can't do it. Who do you think you are? Imposter syndrome is real with me. So when it takes great courage for me to commit and great courage for you to commit when you're going to do something that's hard. It takes courage to stand there and say, who am I not to try? It takes courage to reach for the things that seem impossible. It takes courage to face fear and say, I'm going to do this no matter how hard or impossible it seems. It is courageous. We as humans don't like to be afraid. We don't like to show vulnerability. What if we fail? What if I fail? Oh my God, and everyone knows I've said I'm going to earn this trip and I don't earn it. Um, but I think once, once you have the knowledge that you have to stumble when you're trying to reach those heights, um, if I hadn't had the knowledge that I'm gonna have failure throughout the process, I might not have stepped up and gone through with a huge, with, like with my whole heart. It took huge amounts of resilience to commit to it. I had to spring back time and time again when I'm trying to see if something worked and it didn't quite hit the mark. I had to ask for help. Um, and had to be okay with being vulnerable asking for help, which is a huge thing when you're flying high and also when, when you're not flying high. But the whole time I was striving for South Africa, I dared to dream that I could. I wanted it with my whole heart and that's what carried me through. So it's not just about the PRV or the team building, although that's pretty important. But when it comes to building yourself, when you choose to be courageous and go for the things that you know will challenge you, it's about the belief in yourself to give your whole heart to something that will bring you joy and be willing to take the action needed to make it happen. When you do that, everything else will fall into place. There's, um, there's a quote by a theologian called Howard Thurman, and I just wanna share it with you now because I just think it's, when, it come, when, you, when you dare to commit to these things and you be brave and courageous, um, yeah, I just think it's really apt, so I wanted to share it with you. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it because the world needs people who have come alive. It's that whole bringing you joy, committing with your whole heart. And throughout all my times of success over the years, I've been working from a place of joy. And that's a huge thing. I've been consistent and most importantly, I've been steadfast in my why. You can watch all the training videos about how to do the things, all the things, um, and there's thousands of them out there that can teach us how to achieve great things in our business. But if you are not willing to stand face to face with the fact that you need to find the courage, you need to be vulnerable and resilient and face your fears, it won't happen. The language that we use around ourselves and our business, especially when it comes to, to striving and, and reaching and going to places that we've not been before, is everything. Be so careful of the stories that you tell yourself. Because whatever ending you choose is likely to be tr the truth. You know, if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you're probably right as well. But courage isn't always about being, um, achieving greatness and being brave. Um, resilience isn't always about hustling to achieve. And being vulnerable isn't just about saying that I need help to grow bigger and better. 
This past incentive is the one, is the first one since I've joined where I haven't, I haven't earned the trip. I've achieved level one, which is amazing and I'm really, really super grateful, but it hurt, it smarted. And I feel like um, I made a massive stumble last year. My seasons changed with my business. I started to do full-time study and it was something that I really wanted to do. It's something that I needed to do for my heart. And I thought that I would be able to do all the things. I was overwhelmed. I was exhausted at the beginning of last year. And my whole heart was not understanding. And I became a little bit lost. I beat myself up. I kept it to myself for way too long and it impacted my business massively. One of the biggest things I took from that period of time is to give myself a little grace, to give myself a break, to tell myself that I'm enough regularly. Um, but it's hard because I was in a, I was in a whirlwind cycle. Um, and there'll come a time when you too, your, the seasons of your business change and you feel yourself begin to stumble. Life gets in the way. We start to look for ways, this is me, we start to look for ways, an easier way. It's gotta be an easier way of doing this. Um, shiny objects, you know. Maybe illness hit, hits um, in your family. Babies get born, circumstances change. Maybe even a world pandemic could take hold. And that climb you made to the top of the mountain and the complete joy you felt as you placed the flag in the summit of the mountain it's starting to fade away real fast. And now there's only one way that you can go. Now that might sound dramatic, I know. But after climbing at least, I would say at least three of these blooming mountains now during my Cincy journey, um, I'm starting to get the hang of it, I think. Um, they, I've had hard climbs. I've had hard falls. I didn't just tiptoe or glide, glide down this mountain. I felt like I was free falling and my business was free falling with me at times. Beating myself up for not being where I should be, feeling overwhelmed and confused, took a huge hit on my business. Like I said, be careful of the stories that you tell yourself. I told myself I was too busy. I told myself it was too hard. Um, there's gotta be an easier way. I looked ways to cut corners. I stopped doing the things that brought me joy in my business. And it became just that, all business, all business. So I spent a lot of the time towards the back end of last year rediscovering the joy in my business and rediscovering my why. Now the cool thing is when you are on the other side of that mountain, exactly the same recipe you need to use to climb it is the same one you use when it's not going so well. Yep, courage, resilience, vulnerability, those three things, just in slightly different ways. In the down times, I've learned, this is when I need to dig deep. I tell myself often that this too shall pass. For just like joyful moments of success, when we stumble, they too are just moments and they don't last forever. And it's exactly the same as the seasons of our lives when the very worst heartache, heartache hits and when we feel like we're falling apart or when we experience the joys of loving and living, they're all just moments. And like I said, we can't have the light without the dark. In fact, having that dark makes the light all the more brighter and joyful when we do get to experience it. I use my courage and my vulnerability to share my stumbles and to stop the free, three fall, I do three things. Those three things are to pause, to reflect and to refocus. So let's go through them now, one by one. Pause, I take a breath. I take a break. And it's what I did at the end of last year. I stood back, I rested, I journaled a lot, I read a lot. And this may go against what you've heard before, that you've got to keep going, you've got to keep going. And yet consistency is key. But when you are free falling, sometimes we need to pause. When you stumble and you struggle, you need to step back to find your joy again. You can't pour from an empty cup. I know when I am personally thriving, I am a kick bottom Sensi consultant and there is no stopping me. When I make time for me, my family and friends, everything in my business starts to flow better. 
So pause and then reflect. Look at how far you've come. When your business isn't where you need or you want it to be, the first place you look is within and ask yourself, what brings you joy? What lights your fire? And the most important question when you've experienced free fall, <laughs> when my business is going well, what does it look like? And make a list. And this is where you start. So for me, my list was, when my business was going well, I had consistent family time. I had date nights with my hubby. I was not running around delivering one Scentsy bar here and then driving 30 minutes and, del de and delivering a scent pack somewhere else. I was doing home demos and events consistently. I was meeting up with my team. I was networking and I was meeting new people. I stepped away from social media and gave myself a break from that. And I set business hours so I had good time away from my business. Now, did I do any of these when I was free falling at the start of last year? No, I didn't. I promise, Carly, that that was the last free fall you're going to go through. You know better, you've learned better. That was the last time. So that's my reflect. And finally, refocus. Get glowing, get growing, get going. Work your list and start to take action and move. Pick something from that list to start with and make it happen. One thing at a time. In, the struggle in struggle town times, use your courage to ask for help. Show your vulnerability to people. It's okay to not have your ducks in a row. In fact, I think it's really important as a leader to show my vulnerability. I actually feel a bit weird about people that tell me that their sensory journey has just been one like long, happy, like amazing ride. And also like when someone tells me that their life's been nothing but joyful, red flags go bouncing up everywhere for me. I want my team to know when they too start to struggle, I see them, I hear them and I've been there too. We are all presented with joy and sadness and ups and downs. They need to be shared in equal measure. But because behind every success is hundreds of times when you have fallen short or it's not worked out, you only fail when you give up. And through every time we don't reach the heights we were aiming for, we learn in ways and we grow in ways we never even realise. So your recipe to navigate the seasons of your life and your seasons of your business are to embrace courage, resilience and vulnerability. You're going to need it for each season. And when you're struggling, remember your three, to pause, to reflect, to refocus. Ask the important questions. What brings you joy? When, when my business is going well, what does it look like? And finally, I'm going to try not to cry as I'm reading this because it always makes me cry. I want to leave you with a quote that I read years ago by Theodore Roosevelt. And I feel, feel, feel it sums us up as Sensi Consultants of how courageous we have to be as we go forth, forth and hold firm with our business. It's called The Man in the Arena and I'm going to read it now. So... It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasm, great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of a high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope it helped. Please feel free to reach out to me and connect with me on social media. I'm not on Instagram because I don't like it, but I am on Facebook. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, any questions or anything anyone has at any time, please, please reach out for me. From me, from Zach the Budgie, um, yeah, go forward, be resilient, be courageous and be vulnerable. Mwah.